Hello, everyone, clinicians. This is Ali Nassan. It's time for CBL number 14, case based learning number 14. Okay, CBL number 14 is going to be about another case of intentional replantation. We've done another case of this before. However, I think these cases are each unique and very interesting. And this one brings up some interesting uh, um, points for saving teeth that uh, the patient sometimes would probably uh, otherwise extract. This patient was referred to me for evaluation of a mandibular swelling in the lower left area of the jaw. The interoral and extraoral examination reveals that uh, there are a couple of crowns in that area, some restorations, and there is an old root canal therapy that has been done in tooth number uh, 21, which is your lower left first premolar. This tooth had a root canal a few years ago, the patient recalls, and he also recalls that the tooth has been in uh, chronic discomfort and feeling different over the years, but that just recently it kind of blew up and became symptomatic with some swelling in the area. The patient was adamant that once we diagnosed that the source of the problem was the tooth that had a previous root canal, the patient was not interested in trying to save the tooth. My recommendation was to try a non-surgical retreatment because as you can see here, uh, the root canal, the original root canal was inadequate. It's certainly not cleaned the lower one third of the root and that seems to be the reason why there's bacteria that is feeding the abscess at the apex of the tooth in that area. So we're having an inadequate non-surgical root canal and the best treatment here would be doing a non-surgical retreatment versus doing an apicoectomy. And a non-surgical retreatment would be very easily done through the crown. However, this patient was jaded based on his past experience during the past root canal that was done on this tooth and really was not interested in trying to save it. And he wanted to extract the tooth. Now, you know, being a clinician, you look at this tooth and I say, there's a very good chance that we can save this tooth for you, but he wasn't interested in doing that. So I said, let's make a deal. What I'm going to do is I'm going to try to uh, do what we call an intentional replantation. You want to remove the tooth anyway. We're going to try to remove it. And if it does come out intact, I will try to do a surgical procedure outside the mouth and put it back in. And if it works, that's great. And if it doesn't work, then we'll just remove the tooth for you. And that's not a problem. So the patient, uh, uh, seemed to be happy with that option because he had to go through an extraction anyway. And what we decided to do then in that case was to proceed with doing the intentional replantation uh, or proceed to do an extraction and if it worked, then do intentional replantation and see if the uh, tooth will take. However, it's important to realize that the procedure for doing an intentional replantation, the extraction technique, is different than the conventional um, extraction because what you're doing basically is you're trying not to damage the root surface too much and you're not trying to uh, do excessive use of an elevator that would scratch and damage the cementum on the root. So let's go o over this procedure and see how I uh, did it for him. So here are the x-ray again, you can see the, the problem that's at the apex and our goal here is to remove the tooth. And what we do here first is we use a little number 15 or we could use a 15C scalpel to do a fibrotomy around the tooth. It's important to do this one gently uh, using a scalpel because that would not really scratch the root surface as much as using a very blunt um, elevator that you would uh, be normally using if you were to do this uh, with the intention of removing the tooth. I'm also using this flat um, uh, elevator here now to just kind of create a little bit of space, push some of the tissue around. My goal is to preserve the tissue as much as possible. I'm already getting a little bit of movement in this tooth uh, from the abscess. I'm now using a shoehorn. You have to use the shoehorn moderately and not uh, very aggressively here. Again, the goal here is not to create scratches on the root surface. So uh, you can see that there is a little bit of movement going on now with the tooth. So at this point, I'm grabbing my universal uh, forceps and I'm using uh, this figure eight motion. Uh, and very quickly, the tooth does come out intact. And now we proceed on the bench top to do uh, the apicoectomy. Uh, procedure. And you can see here different magnifications that the tooth is intact. There is no cracks on the root surface, which is important to do this examination. Now I'm using my uh, saber cut burr here to do very quickly an apicoectomy. You could also use a Lindemann burr to do this, this part. You just want to chop off three millimeters from the root end here and then find uh, the canal. And you can see as we're going through, now we can see that area of the canal uh, that still exists. Clearly, this area was not previously um, 
treat it so there's no gutta percha here in the middle of it because this was really a short fill if you recall from the x-ray. So now I'm using a round burr here, just the number two or you could use a number one uh, slow speed round burr with a very high torque handpiece. You could use this also in a high speed handpiece. And now I'm just going down the canal and because these premolars are fairly oval, now I just decided to kind of go in a buccolingual direction. My assistant also pours some either Hank's balanced salt solution or just saline uh, over the tooth. The key with intentional replantation cases is speed. So you want to use armamentarium and procedures that are making it faster. I'm only using the ultrasonic here not to do the whole retroprep, which would take longer than using a, uh, a high speed or a low speed handpiece here, but merely to remove using the saline, remove the debris that's been generated here. I then dry and now I'm using the lid technique to fill this tooth here. This was one of the cases that I did very early on when I moved on to the use of bioceramics. So it's been a long time since I've done this case, but I was using this technique from the get-go by doing this uh, using the uh, RRM paste material followed by this bit of putty right on the surface. Uh, you could also use the sealer instead of the RRM uh, syringable material and then put this thick layer of the uh, putty on the surface, which acts as a lid, if you will, to keep the, um, the syringable material inside and not get washed out. I'm using a micro brush here uh, to remove the, uh, um, the, any flash. And now just go back inside the tooth, uh, and there's obviously a clot forming at this point. And I'm removing and uh, cleaning out the, the clot from inside the socket, just making up some uh, space. Uh, just removing the bulk of the clot. You don't have to completely cure it out the socket. Uh, 